What's up, everybody? This is Gabby. And KT. And this is Building Our Power. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Like, share with a friend if you like what we're talking about. What are we talking about, you might ask? This episode is about how to start talking to your kin folks about communism slash socialism slash leftist politics. So... I will go first, then I'll let KT go, because, you, you know. Oh, because uh, you know what? Because you, you know. know what? You know what? Um, so, I'll be speaking from the perspective of a black person and speaking to fellow black people. KT will talk about, you know, as a white working class pe- person speaking to the white working class. So, I really think my job is easier, to be honest, because... I feel like to some extent, majority of black people understand that there's injustice in the world. They'll even understand it economically. It's just the different conclusions that we come to for whatever reason, whether it be propaganda or whatever. You have people that believe that, you know, this capitalist system is terrible or whatever, and then they end up becoming hotels. And then you have people who end up becoming neoliberals. And Mm -hmm. then you have people who just say, I'm going to pray to Jesus and he's going to help me out. You know, so the goal is to get them in the right direction, walking down that right way, and if they consent and they want to, go and push them towards communism. So usually what what I do, because I've had a good, a pretty good track record on getting folks down the line. My favorite tactic is I don't do nothing fancy, nothing, whatever. I start talking about jobs. I start talking about where they work. What do you do for a living? Because 99% of folks hate their jobs. So, especially over here in the working class, ain't nobody really caring about their job. So, usually I just start that conversation. What do you do for a living? All I do, this, that, and that. Oh, you work at the Amazon warehouse. Oh, okay, cool, cool. What do you think about it? Well, you know, it's all right. We get paid about $15, $16 an hour, so it's good pay, but, you know. You know what? Uh, You know, I mean, they kind of got us working a lot of hours lately, and, um, you know, it's kind of becoming a lot, but, you know, the pay is good or whatever. And then from there, you can start talking about, wow, so you work that many hours making however much they make. So how much you bring home if y'all close? This is like family, friends, acquaintances, folks like that. They'll tell you. And immediately, all you got to do is say, oh, you work for Amazon, right? Let me look up something. Jeff Bezos. Oh, Jeff Bezos is a billionaire. How in the world that man's making that amount of money? What is he doing to make that amount of money? Is he working the same amount amount of hours as you are? And usually they'll be like, no, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't. But uh, that's his company. That's what he's doing. I'm like, and then you get them, to, you get, you kind of throughout the process. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Start to get them to the point of realizing that everybody in that warehouse makes this, makes Amazon run. If mm-hmm. if if something happened and half the the uh, warehouse got sick of COVID or whatever, the 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 plant in that city would go down. They would lose out on a lot of money. And just helping them realize that they are the ones that are running the company. If Jeff Bezos dies tomorrow, Amazon will still stand. If the workers are gone today, Amazon will not be here. So you start getting them to think about that, and then you start getting them to think about. Wow, so y'all are working even on holidays? And do y'all have PTO? Do y'all have health benefit? Interesting, interesting. And you just let them talk. Just let them, just let them start complaining about everything, right? Just let them keep going, keep going. You listen to them. And then you be like, don't you think for all that time and energy you're putting into working that you should at least be able to afford a house by now. And then they might be like, yeah, well, you, you're probably right. How come y'all are working this hard and y'all still struggling to pay your bills? That don't make no sense. Right. And then you get them to talk and understand and understand, and eventually you get to a point that you're like, well, if y'all make the company go around, Y'all are working all of these hours. The company literally wouldn't be successful for you. Why 
are those bosses able to pay you so little? And then they'll give their uh, explanation, or they may say, I don't know. And then I say, oh, I forget, this is capitalism. And in capitalism, whoever owns the factory, they get to decide how much they're going to pay you, and they get to keep the rest for themselves. Ain't that crazy? And then we just go on from there, and that's usually how what it starts. You, here's my question to you, Gabby. What what would you pose as a solution to them with their jobs with low wages? Majority of the time they have no benefits, like you not even mentioning that, that they're going to work these jobs mm. for $15 an hour, okay? It's hard labor, and they don't even have health care. They don't even have access to anything that's going to help them benefits-wise. So uh, what would you pose to them as a solution to um, their current working conditions in capitalism? For right now, I would say, well, hey, I mean, there are some things you can do right now. Y'all can try to unionize. It's going to be a hard battle, but y'all have to realize y'all are making this company run. If everybody gets together and say we want a union, they can't fire all of you. They can't fill up all those positions up at once. Start talking to your coworkers. Just see if you can get some people that at least agree that, hey, these working conditions ain't the best. And come back and talk to me. But eventually, I mean, this, unless I'm going to be talking to this person for five hours, eventually we'll come back and I'll be like, hey, um, did you know, like, in some countries you can work and you can have a house? That's already paid for. You ain't got to pay for. You can have free health care. You can have free dental care. You can have uh, guaranteed food and everything. And I'll be like, wait, where is that at? It's not like a utopia. And then I just say, well, there's this thing called communism. Oh, my gosh. There's this system. Ooh, it's economic it's... system Ew. called communism. And they doing it, baby. They are doing it, and we can do it here. Because the way that the trajectory is going now, capitalism is getting greedier and greedier. Minimum wage has not increased since the Bush era. And the Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, all these people, P. Diddy, Jay-Z, everybody is getting richer. It's never going to be equal. And one more thing, and I'll send it to you. You may have people that say, um, well, yeah, that's how it is now, but I'm just going to keep grinding and stacking my paper so I can become the first, uh, so I can become the first millionaire in my house. All I have to do is tell them to name me one millionaire. They they know by name, one billionaire. And I'm going to look them up on Wikipedia and I'm going to show them the part in the Wikipedia article where they either had a rich uncle, a rich daddy, a rich granddaddy, or they knew somebody was rich, they were sleeping with somebody that was rich, and they was able to get a loan, and from that, they was able to make uh, millions of dollars. They was able to get a million-dollar loan so that they were able to make millions of dollars. That's the only way it's going to happen. They can give me, we can do that all day. So give me the name, give me the name, give me the name. So unless you are about to sleep with somebody that's rich, find somebody that's rich, it's not going to work, partner. So... We can try this thing. We can see if it can work for us. KT, can you tell us a little bit of your strategy on the way that you like to educate the masses about uh, the communism thing? Okay, so this wasn't supposed to be how I'm educating the masses. This is supposed to be my family family and friends. Okay. So just based on, like, what I was researching and what I was looking up, a lot of what we really are talking about is kind of like the art of persuasion, right? So it's about how can we persuade someone um, without using the word communism, I feel like, because there's a lot of propaganda behind that word. So um, I would frame my point of view around food to, to make this clear. It would be food towards a audience that was white and conservative. So I'm going to be persuading white conservative people (laughs) to be communists. So basically what I would start by doing is asking them um, about, like, how much does it usually cost you um, to pay for your food each week in groceries? For me, 
at that point, I would enter in that I'm actually on food stamps, normalizing the conversation around food stamps that I, yes, I'm working class, but I, even though I'm working class, I'm still on food stamps and I still have to use food stamps in order to eat each and every month. Once I, once I start explaining to them like my food stamp and how it, it's because of my limited income that I am on it, and I normalize that conversation because, you know, white racist people who are conservative, they think food stamps is a handout. So to normalize that conversation, I would plague it, not really plague it, but I would like give them the example of me so that it, they would feel relatable to it. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. So um, once I did that and I started explaining like my food stamp situation and the conversation is finally normalized, I would start asking them, well, you know, what if you got food stamps? What if you got $150 in food stamps and three other people in your family got food stamps? How much of that of your income would then be free from your budget each and every month? And so for most people, if you've got like a five family home, at least here in Tennessee, um, you would probably get about $500, $600 in food stamps each and every month. So that's a, that's a lot of money freed up from your monthly budget. Once we start talking about that, like a monthly allocation, I could be like, okay, well, you know what? What if every single month, not only are you able to get food stamps, but everyone else in this country is able to have access to food because you know what? Food is a necessity and explaining that situation to them. Once I did that uh, and we got on good standing with food obviously being a necessity, I could then bring in that, hey, you know what? Let's start funding food for daycares and et cetera, et cetera. So I feel like really, that's a, it's a hard thing to talk to white conservative people about because food stamps has such a huge racist connotation that they think. Um, but I do think that it would be easy for people to understand that food is a necessity and it should be provided to everyone. So m my thing is, how do I get that? How do I, I transfer all of this, a, a capitalist food system where I'm basically starving each and every month on food stamps to a communist system. Well, um, a lot of times, you know, people will be like, oh, well, it's a utopian, right? It's a utopian to have certain, or have access to free food. Um, but I will give them an example of Cuba and how Cuba actually has monthly allocations, your daycares, institutions, like healthcare workers, and even your jobs have access to free food. So if you go to your job, you'll get free food. Let's say you worked at McDonald's. Instead of you paying half off of your food at McDonald's or a full at McDonald's for your food while you're working there, instead, you would be given it for free. So I think that's kind of where I would, I would start the conversation and, and push it. Something else that uh, I think is a great radicalizing tool is I have an idea of taking people on the rich people tour. The rich people tour is when I get all these people uh, in the working class, black folks, on the bus, we drive to where all the white people live in Memphis. Yeah. Uh, the suburbs, we start out kind of easy. In the one hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar houses in Cordova, and then eventually we start venturing off uh, into Germantown land, which is where we get into the five hundred, six hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand. Keep going down. We get over there, Germantown, Cayville. Get over there into the million dollar, two million dollar homes. Get over there where the studio apartments are a thousand dollars a month over there because I think sometimes you just have to see it yeah you can watch stuff on TV I can look at mansions on TV I can look at cribs but ain't nothing like you going outside standing in front of a mansion and realizing that this is in your same city sometimes minutes away from your house 
And then we can start just looking at the people and be like, okay, none of these people are uh, celebrities. None of these people have uh, great basketball careers, you know. Nothing that we can track to know that 100% it was based on meritocracy. So let's start looking at some of these people. Let's start seeing if we can find out what these people do. I'll already have a checklist and I already have some dates and, and some addresses of people who own businesses in the city and like the vicinity of where they live. So it'd be like, okay, who worked for so-and-so, so-and-so? Oh, right, right there, that's your boss house. Yeah, the boss you claim never comes in. The boss that y'all been complaining about the bathroom. The boss y'all been complaining about y'all cars been broken into. The boss y'all been complaining about uh, the hazardous working conditions. That's what it meant, Leah. Yeah, that house that looked like something off the TV. Ain't that interesting? And he don't do nothing, right? Okay, let's go to this next house. What do y'all think this person does? Oh, they're a lawyer. A doctor. What does this person do? All oh, their private uh, equity investor. I wonder how these people get these types of jobs. Interesting. We'll talk about that later, guys. And we'll just go around and just look at all the things. And by the end of it, I'm like, what makes you think they deserve this nice type of living? An ease of life. An enjoyable, comfortable life, and that you don't. Do you believe that? No, and people be like, no, no. We deserve that just as much as they do. Or they might, some people may say they worked for it. For the people that say, no, nah, I can be like, you're absolutely right. There's nothing special about these people. If we look down throughout their family line, majority of them come from money. Mm -hmm. Their family might have had slaves. And that wealth was built upon. Or they knew somebody that was wealthy, and because they were white, they got an upper hand. How many folks you know at your job that's white have gotten promotions over you and are now bosses making six figures? Ain't that interesting? They live over here. You just got to, you really just got to make it plain. It ain't got to be nothing crazy. It ain't got to be no theory. It ain't got to be no nothing. It's just connecting what we already know as black people instinctively. What we already see with our own eyes. I ain't got to go into no dogma. I ain't got to go into playing with your emotions. I ain't got to go with nothing. You tell me what's going on in your situation. Let's find out the culprits. Let's find out where they live. Now, from your own experience, do you think that they deserve that and you don't? Do you think they deserve more than you? And then we go from there. And so eventually we get to the point where we start talking about collective power and solutions of what can be done. Some people may say vote. Some people may say organize. Some people may say riot. Some people may say strike. And from there, that's when I start to uh, implicate some history, start recommending YouTube videos, start recommending history videos of people who have tried every single one of those things. I'll show them videos of people who tried the voting route. We'll look at the, the history of the NAACP, the history of what Martin Luther King was able to do, the history of the Voting Rights Act and where we are now. We'll look at people who thought rioting was the right thing to do. We'll look at the history from the, the, the riots in the 60s, the Watts riots to the riots now with Black Lives Matter and everything, and see if there's been any change. We'll look at the people who've organized in America. We'll look at the people who've organized overseas. And that's kind of, that's really the way that it starts, guys. It ain't, it's literally just talking to people. And like I said, I'm not perfect. I'm not the greatest orator. But, you know, people, I can, I can do some little conversations. And, you know, I have another little thing. This is off the record or whatever. A great organizing tool that I like to use is a social media dating website. Oh, my um, God. I have been able to convert some honeys. That's all I'm going to say about that. But, you know, you do it any way that you can. KT, do you have any more uh, examples of uh, educational tools or tips? So, I want to add, because, like, Gabby and I, each and every week, we kind of, like, go on rants beforehand, before... <laughs> 
before we start recording. Uh, and it kind of allows us to come up with our topic. So um, as you guys know, we've talked about this before on the podcast. Gabby and I like to go into certain neighborhoods, check out the houses. We like to see the history behind the houses, history behind the neighborhood. Um, we like to we like to learn and check out all of that information. So today we actually went over into a uh, a rich neighborhood in Memphis. We went to Germantown and we went a little into Collierville. You guys can look those places up: Collierville, Tennessee, and Germantown, Tennessee. And so um, before that, we were actually at Cordova, Tennessee, which is where. Um, where it, it's a little bit lower than Germantown and Collierville, but it's still up there. Okay, so essentially we went to, this is a really good example of something that you could definitely do if you live in a city. Go to a, uh, a, a Marshall's close to your house, okay? Go to a Marshall's close to your house. If you're, if you're poor, Go to a Marshalls and look at that Marshalls and look at the workers. Look at how the store is organized. Look at who's doing majority of the work, okay? Then once, you're, once you've realized and you've taken a look and you've analyzed this Marshall or investigated this Marshalls, this store, I want you to go over to a richer neighborhood if you're poor or a poorer neighborhood if you're rich and analyze that Marshalls, analyze that store, and check out what, what's the difference between the two. And you are going to be, if you are poor, you're going to, to probably be amazed, honestly. You're going to be amazed because the quality of life that these people in richer neighborhoods have access to, it's way deeper than their roads being fixed. It's way deeper than um, them being able to go to whatever store they, they basically want. It, it's absolutely freaking crazy. People walk on eggshells around these rich white people. It's, it's crazy. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of like a, a story and something I think that everyone should definitely go and check out. Just analyze certain neighborhoods within your area and figure out who lives in this neighborhood, who lives in this area, and why. What's the history behind this neighborhood? So yeah. Okay. So how will you? So you're pretty much advocating for doing the, the rich people tours as well. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but uh, I think yeah, I think that would be a really good idea, even for like conservative poor white people. Yeah. Especially because they think, oh well, you know, it's gonna be a, a one shot in a million. I'm gonna get the American dream, whatever. So I feel like if we literally showed them, like, hey, you live in literally dirt and nothing. You don't have any money at the end of all your bills. But look at this guy over here who's just like you. He's exactly like you. But apparently he 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 deserves it more than you. What? Is he smarter than you? Are you saying he's smarter is, than you and better than he's you? He's better than you? Like, yeah. So, yeah, I definitely agree. I agree with that 100%. That's how you do it. And then one thing, with them rich, with them uh, working class white people, they think they one chance away from being a millionaire. Be like, okay, why didn't your daddy do it? Right. Why didn't your granddaddy do it? Why didn't your great granddaddy do it? What were y'all doing? Why, why everybody in your family poor? Let's talk about that. Why is everybody in your family poor? Nobody, nobody even got a running car. But you think you finna become a millionaire? How? Sometimes with them people, with white folks, I just have to be more, more rude with them folks because you, you just know. But I'm just like, you just got, sometimes you just got to lay it plain like that. Yeah. And that's literally all it takes. Trust me. Starting them conversations, let them people talk. Let them talk and just be there to listen, guide it a little bit. Yep. Until you get to the point, don't I never say communism from the jump unless they like my age or Zen Gen Z. Yeah. Anybody else above that, like my conservative daddy, Trump supporter, I had him over there uh last week talking about, yeah. You know, if uh, all the workers there, if we just realize our collective power, we could actually get some stuff done. I said, what? What? And 
that's what I'm saying. Literally, just let them folk talk. Don't tell them what's going on. And eventually, before you know it, y'all going to be talking about some communism and then be finna be, you know, on the right track. But it's, it's, a, it's a process for sure. Like, oh, okay, okay. Like yeah. Kwame Teray said, the solutions, they have to be based on science and based on reason, not based on no emotions or nothing like that. Based on what we know, that's what I'm saying. Art of persuasion, you got to give a sob story. You yeah. got to make people feel bad for you. You got to give people try. I ain't got to do nothing like that. Tell me what you got going on. Let's try to find a solution. And that's that on that. So, yeah, what do you guys think? We know we just some little folks. We don't know everything. Do y'all have any a good, uh, what do you call it, icebreakers into the, the <laughs> topics of leftist politics? How do y'all get those conversations going? Let us know some tips that you got. You can send, put it in our comments. You can send us an email or hit us up on social media at Building Our PWR, and we'll be sure to mention some of them on our next podcast episode. You can hit up KT at KT underscore does art. You can hit me up at Gap Beats Music. Thank you guys so much for the love and support. We'll be back next week, and we're 